You are now listening to the legendary WUFO Power 96.5, and I am your host, Franklin Crocker. And this is the Franklin Crocker Show. What's good, everybody? How y'all doing today? Good. Yeah, right. You can talk. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk. I mean, this I'm is a, this multitasking. Is a talk show. Yes, this is a talk show, so that's what I, people I talk. I understand. I'm multitasking. I'm going live on Instagram. You're going live on Instagram. And we do have a guest in the house, and we're going to get to the guest in a few minutes. But first, we got to do our recap. So, our recap is going to be from last week. So, last week we spoke about friends, right? We spoke about friends and moments for life. Moments for life with, uh, we use Nicki Minaj and Drake. This is a really good conversation because we talked about friendships and what Carrie and I did last week with going to California and reconnecting with 15, actually 15 plus of our friends. Yeah. So, that was last week's conversation. And uh, it was a good conversation. Carrie is not here today. Carrie's not. It's Carrie, only, it's just, only. yes, it's us two and then our special guest. There's no only. There's only no only. I'm here. Yes. Yes, yes, you are in the building. The Tiffany Moore. Yes, the Tiffany. Yes, we, okay, we are going to introduce her now. I didn't want to introduce her yet, but Aaron is I mean, the boss. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Aaron is the boss. So Aaron does what Aaron wants to do. But I do want to give some shout outs for some people I spoke to this week. Um, you know, this journey of this radio show, this is our, I think, 44, 44th, 44th episode. episode. Um, it's been an amazing journey. Isn't that incredible? 44. You know me and fours. Fours, there you go. So, oh. Fours are your number. Fours are your number. So, there it is. So, this is our 44th episode. Uh, we started December 7th. So, what I've been doing is I'm not the person that is not ashamed to ask other people for help or get knowledge from other people, especially if they have... They know more than I do. I don't care how young they are. You know, so I'm going to give a shout out to two gentlemen uh, that have a podcast named called No Label uh, Podcast, Dante and Nelson. Uh, we actually had a meeting the other day. We went out to a spot at the Burning Buffalo, I believe it is, okay. on Elmwood. Uh, had a nice conversation, nice meal. Uh, happy birthday again, Dante. I know it was his, bir it was his birthday the other day. Uh, but shout out to those gentlemen trying to... Uh, make something happen here in Buffalo with their local podcast called, again, No Label Podcast. So check them out on Instagram. Check them out on Facebook, uh, TikTok. I think they're on all the platforms. No Label. Those gentlemen are really doing some great all things. Right. And gonna we're going to yeah, we're gonna have them on the show. They're going to um, have us probably on their show as well. We're going to exchange some, uh, some airtime with one another. Uh, so shout out to those boys. Another shout out to a gentleman named Jay Nice. Uh, this gentleman's from Toronto. And the gentleman, Skip Diller, that I went to go see in New York City, um, introduced me to this gentleman. He's a DJ uh, on the Top 40 um, station in Toronto. Huge station. So him and I kicked it for a very long time. Uh, he gave me some insight, gave me some real good food to help me out in my career. So I really uh, appreciate that as well. One more shout out. I got one more. Uh, one more. <laughs> <laughs> one more. And this gentleman, I'll save him for last because his name is Dave Smith. Um, I reached out to him on LinkedIn, and he was so gracious and kind to actually call me back. We had a Zoom meeting, and this gentleman is inducted into the National Black Hall of Fame of Radio Broadcasters. Wow. Uh, so he has a huge, you know, huge inductee uh, for this great, great nomination for being, uh, you know, one of the black uh, broadcasters, and he's based out of Atlanta. And he gave me some great food. He actually did a Zoom meeting and he recorded it. And he told me that uh, he may use it as promotional material later on. That's right. Please, Please use it. I know you're listening right now, Dave. <laughs> I need all the help I can get. And believe you me, I will return the favor once I get to that large platform. Um, but again, I appreciate your kind words. I appreciate you telling me some stuff about the legacy. And he actually brought something to my attention that I didn't realize the other day. He brought to my attention that the Franklin Crocker Show is already a brand. It is. Mm -hmm. It was already a brand. Oh, my, yeah. Oh, my ready? uncle. Yeah, <laughs> my uncle created a brand in the '60s with the Frankie Crocker Show, and I'm carrying on the legacy. And I actually looked up some companies that kind of died out but came back, and that's what we're doing. So, a couple companies that died out and came back: AIG, Best Buy, Apple, General Motors. 
So I put myself now in the category of those huge companies. Okay. okay. So, right. you know, right. we're bringing the Frankie Franklin Crocker show back to existence in a new decade. We're resurrection. Resurrection. Resur <laughs> we turn up on a Tuesday and we're resurrecting the Frankie Crocker show. <laughs> so this is what we do. So since you talked a couple times already now, let's let's introduce you. Right. Tiffany Moore with Well More. Nope. nope. Oh. More well beings. Good. More well beings. My bad, more Tiffany. Well -beings. More well beings. Because our, there needs to be more well beings. Yes. Exactly. So that's a that's a, a pun on your name. I, like I love it. More. Yeah. I am. Um, more well beings is a community. Is an organization based in community care and okay. well being. Um, I'm in the process of like divorcing the idea of wellness because it's become such a commodity and more so focused on the well-being of the individual, Got it. the community, your family, your friends, all the things, your well-being from body, mind, spirit, and all that. And it's it's so much more holistic and involved than okay. the term of wellness because, you know, wellness is a tincture nowadays. Wellness is CBD. Go ahead and take a yoga class in your Ooh, body. CBD. And that's not, <laughs> I love it. We aren't really focused on the well-being of the individual when we're focused on the wellness and yes. the commodity, the, the part of the commodification of wellness. Ooh, commodification of wellness. Yeah. Yo, Tiffany, I'm not going to lie. We had a conversation yesterday, and I told you, I wish I was recording it. We had an amazing conversation. I'm gonna and you use the word resurrection. I'm gonna try to resurrect some of the conversation. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not going to be able to, but I'm gonna try to. It was a great conversation. We and today's topic is fear. Fear. We're, we're talking about fear. Yeah. We're talking about not the fear again. I, like I put a post out, not the fear of like Halloween fear of scared of the boogeyman, scared of Candyman, but the fear of what's to come. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we get caught, we had this conversation yesterday, a lot of times we get caught in the fear of the unknown, the doubt. And we're scared of the doubt. We, because we're only used to what we're used to. But the quote I put out also, I think two days ago, was, um, I can't remember the quote now. What was the quote? I remember the quote. I'm putting you on front street. Remember what the quote was? I don't remember the quote. I remember it now. Okay. Fear is See? temporary. <laughs> That's why we're a good team, yeah. everybody. Fear <laughs> is temporary. Fear is t fear is temporary. But regret is forever. Yeah. Yes. And a lot of times we can get past that fear. Sometimes it may take some friends to get us past that fear. Sometimes it may take a conversation. You may see something on TV to get us past that fear. And a lot of times we don't talk about the fear enough. We're scared to talk about the fear. It's like, you know, yeah, let's put it's it It's almost like fear and failure. And but it's okay. It's also vulnerability. Yes. It's vul it, exactly. Being able to, to understand like how intimate that conversation of what your fear is and being vulnerable enough to share that with people that you trust. True. Um, and, you know, some of us don't have communities or friends or family that we trust to be that vulnerable with. And when you talk about communities, that's a beautiful thing because that's going to get to my next segment of community. And you just said something earlier, too, about mental health. You know, Aaron and I were blessed enough to receive these. This, I have this hoodie on right now um, from Puma. Puma is looking. Well, Aaron set this up, so I'm not going to take any credit for this. Aaron, <laughs> I'm giving you all the credit. Aaron was in Italy. Aaron was in Italy mingling with some. With. with yeah, the, Some the people. marketing director of Puma. Yeah. And, yeah, definitely, you know, they, they put us on the influencer list. Hey. And it, it's, it's all in who you know, everybody. It is in who you know. But the beautiful thing about this is, and I'm going to be real transparent right now, today's show wasn't supposed to be about today's show. It was supposed to be about Latin Heritage because this is Latin Heritage Month, so I will get to that next week. But I thought it was important enough to talk about fear and mental health because of what's going on in the world right now. Yeah. What is but what's been going on for a while now. But yet we're not talking about it. Mm -hmm. And the conversation we Which had yesterday. What? There's so many what's that are so going on what's. in the world right now. Which it, one? It, it, <laughs> it, 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 you are a hundred percent spot on. I mean it's it, and it's sad because it is very important. And the conversation we had the other day was about, you know, we had this before as well. In urban society in trying to get help for mental health, a lot of times people feel like, nah, we can't talk about it. Or we talked about it before, we bury it in the sand. We like, nah, we can't talk. We know, we know it's there, but we can't talk about that. We're gonna bury that. We're not gonna look at that anymore. But that doesn't solve the problem. Mm -hmm. It makes it worse. It makes and it worse. 
it gets into the space where you're no longer dealing with the fear, now you're dealing with the repercussions of the fear not being dealt with. And that can lead to anything from a mental breakdown, that can be body breakdown, which is what I experienced. Yes. Um, and I don't think people understand, some people do, a lot of people understand, but that connection between mind, body, and spirit is a connection for a reason and it shows up in so many different ways. So when we aren't dealing with something, when we don't find those outlets, when we don't find that community, uh, that friend, that therapist, whatever it is, those things start to live and fester in our bodies and we get this store, literally store in our bodies. And that's what happened to me. Like, I, I, I don't know how far back you want me to go with this story, but I don't, knew I hit, wasn't no, listening. No, hit, hit me with the story. Okay, so, <laughs> so <laughs> hit me with your best shot. Once upon, upon a time, time. Yeah. <laughs> once upon a time, um, about 18 years ago, I left Buffalo, New York. Okay. Moved um, to the city to be a wardrobe stylist. I did it. I did it. I, I, I checked all the boxes, right? Got the checks, checked all the boxes. And um, I got to the point where I realized that's not what I really wanted to do anymore. I was a part of a vehicle that was telling people they needed to keep up with something that wasn't really true. Got it. Um, I'm dressing these people in these clothes that I have to return, but it's also like people are looking to these people for what to wear. But you, I got to take this back. Yeah. It just didn't. It, it didn't. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it makes sense. It yeah, the facts you, weren't fact yeah. checking for me. And I just realized that I was part of a vehicle that was telling people they needed to consume, they needed to keep up. And I knew that I wasn't supposed to do that anymore. My spirit knew I wasn't supposed mm -hmm. to be doing that anymore, but I pacified that knowing mm. and tried to, you know, create different things, but keep that label of being a stylist because of all the clout and everything that came with it. So And the free stuff. And the, okay, I mean, I mean the, <laughs> everybody honest, got free stuff. Free yeah, I know stuff my is mama, good. what is free is a for free. me. Yeah. <laughs> the free stuff, every, everybody got free stuff. Yeah. Um, if I was working on something and I got something, everybody got something. Um, which was, you know, another thing that was fueling me doing that. I'm like, I have... I have some type of prestige amongst my mm -hmm. friends and amongst people because I can say I did this. I can say like... And you were I, working with a lot of celebrities. I was working with celebrities. I was working with a lot of corporations. Yeah. Like everybody at some point has seen something that I've done, but mm -hmm. you'll never know my name is an audit. Okay. Um, so I knew I wasn't listening. I pacified that knowing. I created um, a production company. We did really great things, raised half a million dollars for Care for half the Homeless. Half a million, okay. Yeah, over the course of, what was that, five years, we raised half a million dollars for Care for the Homeless. So I was doing things, but I still wasn't listening because I was scared. Mm. I was scared to, yeah. yeah, I was scared to disconnect from the comfiness um, of that label okay. and what that actually meant to me, whether it was true or not, because a lot of it wasn't actually true. Um, and I got sick. Spirit yeah. was like, I know you know, that we know you know, that you're not <laughs> no, listening, you yeah. right? So here's Lupus, we're gonna break all of you down. So you um. can't actually do what it is that you want to do anymore. And in that space is when I realized that I didn't know what I sounded like. Mm. I didn't know what my thoughts sounded like. I didn't know what my feelings felt like. I didn't know what my body felt like when it's trying to was giving me information when um, and when I was being led in the spiritual sense. So for me, that's when healing started to take place. Okay. When I allowed myself to realize that I didn't know what I sounded like. So what did you do afterwards? What did you do to overcome that fear? And which, how did you take it to the next level? What did you decide to do? So I, it's, it's fascinating because looking back on it, I don't know that I overcame the fear. Okay. More so, I think what happened is I realized where my power actually was. Mm. I realized what I was attaching myself to wasn't actually fueling me. Mm. So there, it wasn't that I, I needed to overcome anything. I needed to actually understand how to listen to my power and own my power. Oh. And then the fear was no longer a factor. Okay. And that makes a lot of sense. And we're going to get into, we got a phone call coming in right now, but we're going to get into... Oh. Um, callers. Yeah, Hello. so again, if anybody wants to call in and talk about this conversation, 716-837-1112. Again, that's 716-837-1112. Let's get that caller on the line right now. Caller, who we have on the line right now? Listen, if you're afraid, people, if you have anything that you're afraid of, you're talking to the right man in Franklin Crocker, but if you are not Ooh. afraid, and you're not afraid to work right now, Wes Her has the automotive maintenance program no, that you still pumping. Oh, <laughs> 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 please get involved. Go to westher.com. 
and do not forget they're putting rings in driveways. Uh, so I'm out here in Philly right now, and I'm seeing what's her license plate out here. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Everybody, we should let everybody know that this is Carrie. Yes. One of our co-hosts that couldn't be here in the studio. Carrie, you're so seamless. You just jumped in on that Yo, call. Yo, Carrie, you are dedicated. My brother, I love you, man. I love you. I love you. We don't tell that We don't tell that to too many more men, man. Men don't tell other men that they love them enough, man. Carrie, I love you, dog. They're great. They're great. Well, I love you, too. Yeah, man. That's what's up, man. I appreciate it. Westhurst is one of our sponsors. Yes. Thank you, Westhurst. And, and Carrie, I drove by Westhurst on the way to the Winnebago yeah. show. Yeah. Yes, you Welcome did. to Westhurst, New York. <laughs> <laughs> That's my joke. We miss you, Carrie. Carrie, what's your back, dog? Thanks for letting me sit in your seat, Carrie. I keep it up, man. And um, I appreciate y'all uh, changing up the topic very, very much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and talk about Try to give you a little bit more now. <laughs> All right, my man, I appreciate you, dog. Thank you. See you, Carrie. Yep, yeah, have a good night. Yep. You too now. Thanks, man. That's my man, K. Dot. Y'all yeah. see that dude? That boy, that's, I'm like, who, who, who is this giving me props like that? It's K. Dot. K. Dot. That's what's up, man. <laughs> um, also, too, I got one more shout out, and it's going into this fear conversation because it's going to lead up to what we're going to talk about you and your journey that you're going on right now. Um, I want to make sure I say her name right. Uh, where is it at here? Her name is, I have it on here, Carlanda from Black Resource. This lady I met at Juneteenth okay. through a cousin of mine, and she has a marketing company. And we spoke about some things in June. And she liked one of my posts recently, which got curated a conversation of, okay, let's talk again. And we had a meeting today on the phone about things like 11 o'clock. And she gave me so much inspiration on, like you said before, going from what you're used to knowing, corporate America, what you're used to doing your whole career, to something totally brand new. Mm -hmm. And she put a battery in my back. So I'm going to give her, if she's listening right now, she says she may call in tonight. I'm going to give her props because she helped me without even knowing she was helping me. Because she gave, she painted a picture. I still got to go through it. But she helped me to see a vision that I wasn't able to see. Wow. With this new era, this new realm that I'm in right now, in this journey. I'm not used to this. I'm still an infant in this new stage of life. And a friend told me this a long time ago. And I'm looking at this statement that he said, and it's so not true. He said, once I got to 40, I was 39 years old. He said, once you get to 40... Whatever you're doing in your life, career-wise, that's going to be your straight path. Nah, son. Absolutely <laughs> not. And I wholeheartedly disagree with that. <laughs> Absolutely not. Not at Absolutely all. Absolutely not. And what's up? Listen, what's up, like, Randy? What was it? Vera Wang didn't start making dresses until okay, she was uh, what? you and your guest, because she said she disagrees, too. I got scared. So why do you both disagree? Because who, who, who is in charge of your life? That's a fact. That's a fact. Who's in charge of your life to tell you that yeah. at 40, you got to be doing that one thing for the rest of your life? Yeah. Absolutely not. Who's to say you haven't grown and learned enough until 39.9 to be inspired to do something else? That's Who's a to fact. say you haven't been in corporate 9 to 5 until 39.9 and then you find a passion or you find a skill that you didn't even know you had? You can go for it. Go for that. Tiffany, talk that talk, Tiffany. <laughs> there, there are like 50 something, 60 something, 70 something year old people who are just now going back to school. Do what you want to do. Man. Who's in charge? I've been saying that since since yeah. since Sunday school. Yes, yeah, since Sunday school. I had a lot of questions. Yes. Who's in charge? Yes. Right? Who's in charge? Glad she said it about the 70s professor. Uh, I know you do school, so we got a homework assignment for Franklin for next week. Look this okay. up. That always okay. motivated me. You know, if I'm right, they said Samuel L. Jackson speaking to that because, you know, he was on drugs his whole life. Yes. He didn't start really acting and get to theater and doing stuff to his mid 40s. And right now, he, oh, he wow. is the, the only person in the world that. He's been in the most movies. Nobody mm -hmm. has ever been in over movie 150 in movies, well. and 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 revenue as well. The most movies and also the most revenue of any actor in history is Samuel Jackson. That and is incredible. At 40, at mid 40s, he started his career. Yeah, and he, like you said before, he overcame drugs to start his career. He was what movie was he a crackhead in? He was a uh, um, 
White Man Kid? No, no, no. Um, 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 oh, Jungle Fever. Jungle Fever. Jungle Fever. Wow. Gator. Yep, 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 exactly. He was he was selling his brother's stuff. He was a crackhead. So again, you can <laughs> <laughs> you can always overcome. You can always get past whatever. Sometimes, and it's, it's sad. Sometimes people, our friends, our family, our circle, put their fears onto us. Listen, so well, you got to be very scary about that. Listen, in, in their boxes. Yes. yes. Of what they see. And People what they can only meet you as far as they're willing to go themselves. True. And this is one of the things when I do when I that I very specifically talk about when I'm taking on one on one clients. And I don't just take on anybody and everybody because I might not be the person for you, you might not be the right person for me. Oh. But in a consultation, I have a consultation with every single one on one client that I have. And I specifically say to them, I can only take you as deep as I'm gone in healing work with myself. Mm. Anything else is performative. So in anything else, I'm just I'm regurgitating something somebody else told me. Got if it. I haven't learned it, if I haven't lived it, I can't give it to you, mm -hmm. right? And people are out here guiding people who haven't learned or lived certain things. Not that you have to know every single thing, but have you overcome fear? Have you questioned how you were brought up? Have you mm -hmm. questioned those life lessons that you just inherently believe? If mm -hmm. not, like, what are we talking about? You can't lead me anywhere. Tiff, yo, this is yeah, why we got you in the show, Tiff. You can't leave me anywhere. Tiff, you are a breath of fresh air. And not only your perspective is how you articulate your perspective. A lot of times people know what to say, but they don't know how to say it. Or they can say something to you and you just don't receive it the right way because of certain tonality in their voice, certain words they may use to emphasize. So you kind of like put a blockage up. But Tiff, when you talk, you talk that talk. You help me to feel what you're saying without even being there. You give me a vision that sometimes I didn't even know I had. And I really, Tiff, I'm telling you right now, I really appreciate you, Tiff. Yesterday we had that conversation and it was so monumental for me. It caused me to make a couple extra reels and get myself vulnerable online that I've never done before. And, I, and you were that person. So I really, truly, I'm sorry, I'm pointing at you, I apologize, I'm not trying to be rude, but I, 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 I truly appreciate you, number one, being here today, number one, having that conversation with me yesterday, and helping me in my mental health struggles sometimes, because what Puma, I got the thing here, what Puma's doing as well, to kind of segue into this, Puma is, started this awareness, and it's, it's actually, I have it here, it's the, the project is called... Um, the tr uh, the Trevor Project. Oh, okay. So Puma is partnering up with the Trevor Project, and this is what these these oh, hoodies yeah. are. Yeah. And they actually there's a hotline you can call. Going back to what we talked about earlier, sometimes we say we don't have the outlet or the resources to get that help that we need, and Puma is helping with those resources in the pro in Trevor Project. So you can call, and it's right on my sleeve here, nine eight eight. Text or call nine eight eight if there's any questions, any mental issues that you may be going through. Again, some of it can be steered from fear. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're very scared to do a lot of different things in our life, and that fear can cause mm -hmm. mental health issues. I'm going through some fear, and we had this conversation yesterday on this new path in my life, because I don't know what's to come. The only thing I know is God put me here for a reason. Mm -hmm. I still don't know the full reason as of yet, and sometimes I want something way more faster than I could actually accept it because I might not be ready for what I really Ooh, want right now. Let me tell you something. Ooh, talk about it. <laughs> let me tell you something. There's a, Franklin. Yes. Franklin. Very recently, this is part of the the, the tour, the journey that I'm on. Okay. I got exactly, ex, my man, exactly what I asked for. Mm. Exactly the way that I asked for. Mm. It. No questions asked. I was like, this is the amount that I want. They're like, sure. <laughs> It'll this. be in your bank account very shortly. And I'm like, so you mean to tell me, that, that meme with the little African boy, you mean to tell me <laughs> you're about, you about to give me this money and you're not accounting for it? Like, literally. So going back to what we were talking about around people telling you what you need to do and how you need to do it. Yes. I have had so many influencer friends in my life, still do, and they're always like, you should be doing this like this, you should be posting this many times a day, you should be doing this, we use the five pillars of this. And these these are people who are making a lot of money and mm -hmm. have made a lot of money, made careers, made businesses out of being influencers, right? So they're not wrong in what they're saying. Correct. But does that resonate with me? 
is that true for me? Correct. Is the question always, always the question. And this, when I got exactly what I asked for, this person is not like, I need you to post five times. I need you to do this. I need to account for this. They don't want anything. Mm -hmm. They were like, I trust you and your vision. Go for it. That level, that level of being seen in alignment with what it is that you're doing and getting exactly what you asked for just for showing up is something completely different that people don't talk about. We can talk about it all day around like, you know, what isn't here yet, but are you ready for it? Mm. Are you are you actually ready for it? Did lot, you make room? Do you not. know do you know what to do when it lands in your lap? No. Okay, so before we get to manifesting, can we get to planning? Planning. Everybody want to manifest something. We're consistently manifesting things all the time. With our thoughts, with our words, we are constantly planting seeds. And they're constantly blooming. Are you aware of that? Are we Are we literally aware that we're consistently building the life that we're in right now? Mm -hmm. A lot of us aren't. We aren't. Wow. And it, so when you get exactly what you want, <laughs> what you going to do with it? And a lot of times we don't know what to do with it because, again, we're not planning. We weren't prepared for that blessing that mm -hmm. was handed to us. We want it, but are we ready for it? Right. A lot of times we're not. So let's get to this quick commercial real fast. No commercial, Rob? We, oh, we go right, commercial right now. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo, Lackawanna, Chicktawaga, and beyond. WUFO, Mississippi, and powered by Fresh Air Mississippi. 96.5 FM. We're back. So we're back again. So we're going to get into this. We're going to get into the song tonight. Then we're going to talk about your journey, Tiffany, and this new journey that you're on right now that hopefully the listeners could have this resonate in their souls and help them with their journey. It may not be the exact same journey because your journey is not the same as mine, but it's still a journey though. Mm -hmm. And like I told Aaron all the time, we talk. I talk about like going on a long distance vacation, traveling somewhere 16 hours. Sometimes you have layovers. And within those layovers, it's still not your destination, mm -hmm. but it's just a layover. And we have to see things in our lives as destinations. I mean, excuse me, as layovers. So what we're going through, what you're going through right now, it's some of the, the ups and downs could be a, you know, just quick layover. But sh there's a lesson in the layover. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to get the lesson out of the layover. We don't want to understand and appreciate it. And it's funny because when I just came back from California, we had a layover in, I don't know, Atlanta somewhere. And we had fun on our layover. We, we had an experience <laughs> in this layover. Sometimes those layovers are fun. <laughs> you have to. You have to treat it as such because it is still part of the journey. Yeah. You yeah. can't, you can't, you know, well, negate it. Yeah. I have a friend who, who, I mean, I, I'm curious to know what you think about this. I have a friend who doesn't believe that in destinations, the journey itself is the destination because being present is the journey. Being present in every single moment is the destination for them. And I think that that's a beautiful way to experience life. Uh, but there's also room for other perspectives. And that's the thing we we're talking about around discussion. Discussion, yes. Like, and we're going to get we're gonna get through those yeah. three Ds. Yeah. Debate, discussion, and dialogue. Yeah. And we're going to go into more depth about those three topics or three you know, three words. And uh, Aaron, you're very quiet today. This is not typical Aaron. <laughs> I know, it's not typical. This is not typical Aaron. Aaron, I don't hear the laughter, the bubbliness. No, listen, or... you know what? I'm just a little tired today. It was a okay. long day uh, okay. at work. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that. So we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. You so, guys know that I'm a full-time professor at Buffalo yes, professor. State, and it's a lot. Yes. So today was just a lot. That's all right. Well, yeah. I, so, I, I, but I forgive I, you. But you I mean, that. you. I do. It's, deep it's, breaths. It's, I, deep breaths, and I got it. And I forgive you, Aaron. So. You know, <laughs> I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> So let's get into Listen, some fun this facts. This conversation is so illuminating, and you guys, yeah. We're so gonna, we're just, gonna, and and it, it, guess what? We still got a whole 27 minutes to go. It's going to get crazy. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Yo, Reddy got all the buttons, man. Yo, you are on point. So I, I want those buttons. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got you you know those buttons. <laughs> <laughs> See, we, we got another one to come, too. You're going to hear another one. It's going to be a dope <laughs> one. Um, so the fun facts. Our song tonight is going to be by a gentleman named Jay-Z. And the song is going to be called Regrets, okay? But let's get into some fun facts about our boy Jay-Z. And I got a couple of different things here. Does anybody know what Jay-Z's real name is? Let's start, let's start off with that. You know what Jay-Z's real name is? Reddy knows. What's, what's his name, Jay? I mean, Sean Ray. Carter. We know what his middle name is? Ooh. That's easy. What's that? Cracker. Nope. <laughs> Close, <though. laughs> Close. It's Corey. It's Sean Corey Carter. Really? Yeah, yeah, Sean Corey Carter. Okay. So next, now we're gonna go into a little bit. I'm gonna peel this layer back of Jay Z. Now I may talk to him. I may see him. <laughs> I may see him um, 
at a conference I got to go to. He oh. may or may not be there. Who oh, knows? Okay. Okay. But if he's there, we'll have a conversation. <laughs> but the next thing, pulling the layer back of his name, does anybody know where Jay-Z came from? I know Reddy may know. Oh, Reddy, you don't know this? I think, I think. Right? Did they have to do something, I think, so with Jazzo? Yes, Jazzo. Wait, where he came from? His name. His name came from his friend. Oh, okay. His name, Jay-Z, came, he broke it down. His friend was Jazzo. I don't know if you ladies remember a song called Hawaiian Sophie. Remember that song? That song, Hawaiian Sophie, that was Jay-Z's first it's time first, being on in a video. At the first music video. First music video. And actually, Sophie. the stylist of that video is from Buffalo. Is it? I didn't know that. See? You can now help me with My friend, Joan Fedezen. Dope. Yeah, so that video, Jazzo, that was his friend. He derived his name, Jay-Z. Took the first letter of Jazz, J. Second letter, I mean, last letter, Z. Jay-Z, and that's why he came up with Jay-Z. That's, that's how it is. That's how it is. Okay. So, that's something new. Um... Did you also know that Jay-Z in 1989, his album came out in 1990, I believe it was reasonable doubt. In 1989, he lived in London, and he actually was recording with a lady named, do you know who the lady is? Uh, do you remember the lady named Mona Love? Moni? Oh, yeah, Moni Love, yeah. absolutely, yes. Yeah, Moni in the middle, where we at? Hey, in the middle, go. Hey, Mo 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 where we Moni in the middle? It's the same, yeah, it's the same. Well, yes. It's a shame. Yes. The way you must oh, 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 yes. It's a shame. Yeah, oh, we got a singer here. Hurt me. Oh, we got a live one. <laughs> we got a live one. So, yes, that's the song, and Jay-Z was recording with Moni in, in London. Really? So, he lived there for about a year. So that's some new fun facts about Jay-Z, if you didn't so know. Cool. And one more fun fact about Jay-Z. I know Reddy knows the song. You know the song, girls, 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 mm -hmm. girls, 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 mm -hmm. I do adore. You know who the backup singer for that song was? Um, in the vocals? Yes, um, in the vocals? No, you don't know. I can tell you don't know. By your, by your body language, I can tell you don't know. I can tell by that dance right there. He would never dance like that, this guy. Oh. If you did something like this. Rick? Nope, if you did something like this. Do y'all know this? Do wasn't know? it Slick Rick? No, nah, it wasn't Slick Rick. It was Michael Jackson. What? Michael Jackson actually sung the vocals for that song, but he never gave Michael Jackson credit for it. Michael was a friend of Jay-Z's, never asked for credit for it. Wow. Yeah, girls, girls, girls. Right. So that's something. See, I always try to stump people, and I, and I got ready over there Googling it right now because, like, yo, I don't think it's done. I don't think it's right. <laughs> Is he really Googling it? No, no, he's not. But I, I am, though. Those are, some fun, uh, those are some fun facts about our boy Jay-Z. So let's get to the song called Regrets. Uh, we got the clean version of it. Oh, one more thing. One more, one more. This is actually a good point. And this is for you, Reddy. Do you know the Reasonable Doubt album, which was probably the hardest album he ever made? You know that album wasn't supposed to be named Reasonable Doubt? No, I didn't know that. The, <laughs> album, was supposed to be, the album was supposed to be named Heir to the Throne. H E I R to the throne. I'm just going to put an asterisk in this okay, conversation. Okay, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> um, girls, 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 I Googled it. Um, it's featuring Q Tip, Slick Rick, and Biz Marquis, so I was not wrong. No, yeah, you were not wrong, but it is featuring them. Yo, Reddy got the buttons now. I love it. He got them joints on standby. I love it. Good job. Um, so we, let's get into the song Regrets, Jay Z. This is an old song. It's not, it's, I don't think this was a radio song, right? It wasn't a radio hit. But guess what? It is now. Hey. Let's go. <laughs> oh, hold up. Hit the button. So first button, say, you got to say this. Say first button. First button. Oh. Se say second button. Second button. Ready. Now you got to say maestro, hit the button. Maestro, hit the button. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I sold it all from crack to OPM In third person, I don't want to see him So I'm rehearsing with my people out in GM And we're remote location in the BM Scoping my whole situation like Metamorphosis as the turns to cream But one of these buyers got eyes like a Korean It's difficult to read him the half closed, I put the key in, pulled off slow, hoping my people flee in. Chink try to knock the only thing that rocked me in. Coppers is watching us through nighttime binoculars. Chasing dope for dollars. 
And then this turn on the yeah. Nervous confined to a corner. Oh, we're still live. We're still live. I can not easy dress to learn the leather to regrets. <laughs> oh, this is the number one bro for you said in order to survive, gotta learn to live with regret. All at the top, when we drop, don't forget in order to survive, gotta learn to live with regrets. This is the number one bro for you said in order to survive, gotta learn to live with regrets. And through our travels, we get separated. Never forget in order to survive, gotta learn to live with regrets. So Earth is Earth and the higher learning Thinking directions My Cause the insides are dying The sun trying to patience Keep our heart racing A million beats a minute I know I push you to your limit But it's this game love I'm caught up all in it Never give it You gotta take it I keep it all authentic My hand got this pistol shaking Cause I sense danger Like Camp Crystal Laken Don't wanna see it But I got him Trapped within the simple red dot About to hide him in Hit rock bottom No answers to these trick questions No time sets My life probably got to live for the right now Time waits for no man Can't turn back the hands once it's too late Gotta learn to live with regrets You used to hold me and told me that I was the best <laughs> Anything in this world I want I could possess Are we back on the line? Are we back on the radio? Yeah. Oh my bad Oh yeah. I know we back on the radio <laughs> I'm sitting there rapping <laughs> Oh man Yo. I thought that you knew that. No, I just thought he I thought he just, just cut it off early. Passion. No, yeah, I thought he just cut oh amazing. I thought he just cut off early. My voice is changing as I'm getting older too. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm using it a lot more, so you maybe you should yeah, muscle. Yeah, maybe have to go yeah. do some I may have to get a vocal coach. Oh alright. Yeah, I may have to get a vocal coach. We gotta hire one of them pretty soon. <laughs> I'm fronting, ladies and gentlemen. I, you know what? Today is that night. I gotta we not fronting, man. I I there is no vocal coaches, okay? <laughs> <All right. laughs> Let me stop fronting like I got all this and I ain't got nothing. I'm still I'm still trying to make it. But that song is called Regrets. And this song is talking about him, you know, to living. He's talking about living with your regret. We talked about that fear. And there's a line in this song. I just want to go over a couple of these lines real fast. This is a dope line. This, to me, this line is the best line. And I don't know. Can I say this on the radio? Is, is it right? Not Whatever. It says... But one of these guys has eyes like a Korean. It's difficult to read them. The windows to his souls was half closed, so I put the key in. Mm. Ooh, think about that. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the whole Korean thing. They talk about our eyes are the key to our soul. People say they can look. People can look at your eyes, look at you dead in your eyes, and tell something about you. Yes. But what he was trying to say was this guy had eyes like a Korean, so meaning that his eyes weren't fully open. So it's very tough to look at somebody directly in their eyes if your eyes ain't fully open. So they were kind of squinting, whether he was high or whatever it is. He just he didn't say that, but oh, <laughs> but his eyes weren't fully open. Okay. All right. So he said it's difficult to read them because people sometimes use your eyes to read you. Mm -hmm. Your eyes will tell you everything. Sure. You can look to the left, to the right. Mm -hmm. You're lying. Everybody that knows so it's me difficult knows to read them. But he said I put the windows, uh, the windows to his souls are half closed, so I put the key in. Mm -hmm. So he opened, he looked through his eyes and he opened up his soul still. That is a, Jay-Z is, I'm going to tell you this right now. If I had a man crush, it would be Jay-Z and Tom Brady. Wow. Oh, you are so funny. And Tom Brady. <laughs> I feel like there's some more conversation. No, 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 no. The reason I say, no, the reason, the reason I say that is this. And he's saying this on the, the no, I'm saying the, no, 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 no. The reason I'm saying this is this. When you think about the history of this guy. And we talked about starting something late. He started his career at 30 years old. Rap, the rap game was a young man's game. Was somebody at 19, 17. Now, he rapped at a young age, but he didn't start his full career until he was 30. And think about where he took. Now, granted, I don't condone this, but I do condone what he did with it. He took drug money and turned it into an empire. So he was smart enough, number one, to never get caught. Smart enough to never die. And take this rap, hip hop, and take it to another level. Do you realize another fun fact about Jay Z that I didn't even put on here? Do you realize he was the first hip hop artist to get a sneaker contract without being an athlete? That was unknown. 
He now they they'll granted they were the ugliest sneakers in the world. Yes. S. Doc Carter's. Yes. By Reebok, but he allowed and people don't realize he allowed these other rappers now, the Travis Scotts, you know, with these three hundred dollars sneakers, the Kanye Wests with the you know the the Yeezys to have these sneakers. If it wasn't for Jay Z doing it first, he, they wouldn't have this. He is a billionaire, not with his wife's money. That is probably a billionaire as well. And and he says in one of his songs how he helped to other people to become billionaires. And I give him a lot of credit for that. Rihanna is under the Jay-Z yeah. umbrella. Okay? She's a billionaire. Beyonce, not under his umbrella, but part of his circle, a billionaire. Kanye West, a billionaire. These are people he has helped to become billionaires. And not too many billionaires help other people to become a billionaire. So I give him a lot of credit for that. And that's why I say... You know, a lot of things, I listen to a lot of Jay-Z's words and a lot of his, what he says and his metaphors. And he, and he said one of his songs, you know, I got 99 problems, but something ain't one. He will give you a lot of food, and a lot of game for your life. And if you listen to his words correctly, like we talked about our first show, if you actively listen to what he's telling you, he can help you in business. He can help you in relationships. When he had the issue with his wife, Beyonce, he was the most vulnerable he's ever been in his life. He had a song that he was crying on. His mother is gay. He had a song about his mother and was vulnerable and letting the world know about that. Not too many artists allow you to come into their world like that. That's why I give him credit. And that's why I'm opening up my world, listening to what he's doing in his world. He's a billionaire. I'm nowhere near that. Well, I'm kind of close to a billionaire. I'm just a couple, no. I'm a couple zeros off. Like maybe, I want to say billion. Seven. Maybe more than that, maybe eight or nine. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a billionaire in spirit. Yeah, you know, you and, and you health. Now nah, I said health as well. So health, I have. I think I'm. A, you know, Aaron gets to my. You know, it gets to me every once in a while. I do go to the gym every day now. Sometimes a late gym sighting of Crocker, but I do go to the gym. <laughs> I don't go at six o'clock in the morning. Um, but you know, I do give credit to him about that. So let's talk more about the fear. Let's talk about your journey, Tiffany. Talk about your journey and the company that you created and what you're now doing out of the corporate the corporate world that you were used to and got into this whole new realm that you're now exploring that you're having, in my opinion, great success in. So let's talk about that. Okay. Um, there are so many different angles that I can come to this at. Um, so I haven't had a corporate job, um, I'll say, in, in like t 10 years. I just realized that that Ooh, wasn't 10. That's, that's for me. Number. Okay. Um, I am also neurodivergent, so like just like that level of miscommunication, intentional miscommunication is something that I can't really handle in the corporate intentional world. Intentional miscommunication, yeah. okay. Um, so I I guess I can say I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'll say that I'll say that that's a very kind way of saying how I've gone about my career. Okay. <laughs> I have started different projects, different businesses, different brands over the years. Um, not all of them have, you know, made it out of the gate. Uh, but this one here, More Well Beings, is the culmination of the best parts of all of them. Um, it is when I, you know, when I say mind, body, spirit, I mean it is literally how what I'm being led to do, um, what makes sense for me, what excites me, and I think that's really important to be excited about what you do, um, and how I am best use and best of service to my community, um, my community to people across the diaspora, my community to um, all types of people, local community, even though I'm not really connected to my local community just yet. Okay. Um, but what, what I'm doing right now in, in relation to fear, I, about 10 years ago, um, I started this project and I wanted to do it out of a Winnebago. <laughs> Yes, you have, a dope, then, you have a dope 1972 or 73? Yeah, 72. 72 in the bagel. Before uh, we were all, before I mean, was born. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to do, if, if, if I wanted to start a project, I would literally ask myself, can I do it out of a Winnebago? I like sketched it out and everything. I wanted this, this particular Winnebago. And there were all these excuses over, for over a decade of like, why I can't do it now? Mm. Why it doesn't make sense to do it now? Why no one else is going to care about what I'm doing? Why it's going to look stupid? Like all types of things. And um, I, at the end of um, 2020, at the end of May 2021, I was um, coming back home from living in Oaxaca, Mexico for about six months. Oaxaca? Oaxaca, okay. Mexico. I was saying it wrong the whole time I was there. <laughs> <laughs> just, so, just so everybody knows. <laughs> um, 
and I went to the doctor for just like a checkup because you know I was on international insurance I was uh, transferring back over to the state's uh, health insurance and I just went to a clinic real quick to get checked up because I was feeling a little bit laggy and I'm you know anything can cause it I'm traveling different times or different yeah. food so it was no big deal I just went to a clinic real quick um, and long story short a few months a few weeks into it I get diagnosed with cancer um, thyroid cancer, which is quite popular in Buffalo. I just found that out. Huh? And um, I went through the whole nine. I had to actually move back to Buffalo, which I was not happy about. And went through surgery and um, treatment and everything. And it was just a, a wild year as far as like recovery goes. Huh? Because it wasn't just physical. It was all types of things. And on a metaphysical level, like what is this cancer doing sitting in this area of my body? What is it actually telling me? Um, so there's all types of levels of healing that came from that. And um, after the surgery, what we wanted to happen was like, we take out half of the thyroid, the other half of the thyroid is fine, it kicks in, there's no cancer, we're good. Well, it kicked in, it was fine, but there was cancer mm -hmm. on the other side. And my doctor, black woman, doctor, Dr. Kimberly Wooten, only six months older than me at Roswell, wonderful doctor. Oh. We had this conversation and I told her that I didn't want to have the surgery. Um, and she said, okay, well, you just got really bad news. What do you think about this? And I was like, what do you, I don't know what I think right think now. I'm, what yeah. are you talking about? So how do you feel? It's like, again, I have just received information and that's, that's where I am. I don't uh -huh. think or feel anything at the moment. She's like, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I just told you I don't want to have the surgery again. She was like, no, what do you want to do in your life? What, how do you want to live your life? Because it's my job to give you the information to make the proper decisions to live the life the way you want to live it, mm, not powerful. to tell you what to do. God, that's powerful. And the first thing that popped into my mind was this tour that I've been waiting 10, 11 years to do. Um, so again, it wasn't a overcoming fear type of thing. It was like, where's my power? Mm. Let me let me find my power and stand in it and make these decisions because the thing about fear is it doesn't necessarily go away. You meet it. You have to meet it. Otherwise, you're just bypassing